anyway, yeah. So, so can we get some replays up? Because you you said one base, so yeah, I imagine yeah. this I've only got specific. one, but no it's. It, I mean, I, I generally I think it's something that I need to sort of generally improve on in terms of uh, one base defending one base shenanigans in PVT. I, I never. I, I sort of just never know what to do since. I feel like I scout one thing, and then it turns out to be another thing, and I'm dead because I scout. I didn't scout what I actually was. There's a back, yeah, bit of you backstory. Just, you just need to have a middle ground. You've just got it. Yeah, you, well, you can't scout everything. The whole point of one base Terran is like you can't know exactly what it is. So you just need to choose a line and get good at it. And I'm not sure you can be a hundred percent safe versus everything, which I know a lot of people don't like. Um, <laughs> this guy did I'm, do the. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this guy did the. Um, uh, float buildings the corner of the map the previous game I played him so uh, I think that's why he's pretty pissed at me so <laughs> how to play versus one base PVT coaching where are we at diamond two diamond one at the moment my man diamond one diamond one awesome ooh I think so... you're not loaded in or something sorry that's Maybe that's or... just me I was just um I was just uh, tabbing out and just marking it so I could chuck this one up on the second YouTube channel, trying to get in the habit of putting coaching videos up again. And I'm sure people will enjoy having a how to survive one base um, PVT. So that should be good. So you're you're in the game though, right? Worked for you, yeah? You're... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. We're in, okay. No worries. A big thanks, Godel Escher back. Really appreciate the two month resub. Thank you. Okay, so what line? You're doing a two gate line. Your second gate is not particularly fast but it's fine that's i've been doing it about that time recently as well just because you know i have found i haven't needed the stalkers as early have we lost anything no um yes yeah, stalker pressure can be really nice but you've got to be ready to recall instantly if they just do yeah a couple reapers couple of hellions or something like that if you can kill the reaper hey worth it kill the reaper and get the stalker out nice your robo is pretty quick. Um, Observer's out. All right, here's where we're fucking up, maybe. Potentially, I think I think here's where we're fucking up. You're going gases on your natural too fast. So, and, and Twilight, both. Both way too early. And the wall off, okay, yeah. don't ever be walling off. So with this sort of build order, because the scary Hellion run buys are like one base Hellion drops, okay? So... They're hitting you like 345, like already they would have hit you kind of thing, right? So the idea is as long as you got like four, probably hopefully five stalkers, I would say, um, by then you should be totally fine as long as you're like split between the front of your base and your main, right? And especially yeah. if you've figured out it's coming. Um, you did not scout for proxies. So that does mean the really fast Hellion drops quite scary if say common spot would be here. Um, potentially over here. But if they build the factory and the starport there, they could have a really fast Hellion drop coming off that. And, you know, and that would be a bit of an issue. Now, obviously, you saw Hellions pop out at home, but you saw yeah. that kind of late-ish. So I think that would have been probably a little bit later than we would have wanted um, because you would have wanted to be in position a bit earlier. So let's go right back. Um, let's go right back. Did you see the reaper let's just let, let's let okay let, let, let's map out just the details okay so pigs response uh i'll just write like kind of what i would do two gate stalker so same as what you're doing um stalker immediately pressure right is what i would i would do with that first stalker because if he was going to be here he'd already be here and there's not much downtime right so if that stalker go goes out straight away cause your net you've got a wall off on the high ground it's a bit nastier on a map where you uh can't wall the high ground what's um romanticide you can't wall off the high ground very easily which is a bit annoying so it becomes a little bit more difficult for you um <clears throat> on this map you can actually just wall off with just your gate your core and your pylon so yeah i misplaced it this game but okay fine. Cool. yeah so i guess i can understand if you didn't have that second gate leaving the stalker, but otherwise he can only come in the front. So if you go straight across the map and chrono another stalker straight away, yeah, you can get over there and you could, if you look at this, you might've been able to kill some like more units potentially, right? 
Because you could get here, kill the Reaper, and then Hellion comes down, and you're like, well, I'm actually going to be able to beat a Hellion in a fight as well, kind of thing, right? Or at least, like, take a bit less damage. That would have been just really nice, because it also confirms, are they actually building things at their base, or on your side of the map, or is there a quick command center behind it? So I think that Stalker immediately pressure, unless there's Reaper threat, um, is has got to be a nice little piece. Uh, I think you should always scout for proxies. I actually like to send two probes like the scouting probe will go check but i'll have also sent out another probe around the other side um you could just go for one what are your thoughts on scouting for proxies how do you feel about it i think the only build that i'm wary of particularly is the um there's a double factory cyclone proxy that i lose to occasionally which uh I think okay. so. Double factory yeah. proxy, and they both they're both tech lab factories. Tech lab factories, yeah. There it, could also it, be they, yeah. proxy marauder, technically, right? Because you don't really know what he's yeah, doing yeah. in this case, right? So he could come in with a few concussive marauders, and that could be a, a big nightmare because that could hit you like three min minutes, three twenty or something like that. Now you have an early shield battery, which will help you there, so you probably be okay against it with the shield battery, but um, yeah. I, is there anything i don't i guess technically he could have proxied his factory in a stop or and then just be rallying marines from home and then just have a closer rally for like tanks and vikings for like a basic one 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 push right yeah which is not the scariest in the world um you know that's what it looks like he's gonna end up doing from his side of the map uh into a battle cruiser funnily enough but uh yeah so i, I don't know i'm I, I, i'm kind of like maybe you just keep skipping that scout until you start getting punished a lot by it and if if you get punished by something and then you're like oh actually it doesn't matter like i just fucked up building a pylon or something like this 46 supply block that gets you killed by an attack right now you go oh let's just fix that so if you want to keep skipping that scout that's actually kind of awesome um i don't build the shield battery if their barracks is at home like this i i will skip the shield battery entirely because i don't want to be scouting the whole map with two probes and building a shield battery it kind of fucks your opening up a bit too much um puts you a little too far behind if that makes sense so for you if you want to build the blind shield battery that's okay you're skipping the probe scout kind of equals out right i think that's actually probably something is a bit more of adjustment since i have had people who just do pro uh, one barracks at home two barracks sort of out on the map somewhere and then just produce marines and then go that's kind of something that's happened before so, and, and did it beat you? No, because I had a two better at home. It's like, oh, this is decent. So yeah, well, if you feel fine with it, then let's let's leave it. That. Let's just keep our minds open to that option. You start dying a lots of shit, we might need to change it. So we've got an option available there. Awesome. Um. Uh. Sorry, lost my tab. Okay, so into the robo for observers so you can actually confirm what the fuck is going on <laughs> into the the twilight and extra gateways these are all nice things to do but you are a bit bit starved for money so i think one of the things you just need to give a bit more attention here is just realizing it's like you're kind of stuck on just building stalkers for quite an extended period right so let's think about this okay so in terms of like i'm, I'm gonna put this not as an exact build set but more like notes it's kind of non-stop stalker production. <clears throat> and the thing is, you need to be able to wear down a push as it moves across. Because stalkers are just shit units unless you actually start to step them, right? So if you see him do a tank marine push, you need to get out there and start engaging him from at least here. If you're doing it from over here, amazing, right? Because then you could just kill everything by the time it gets to your map, even with if your side, even without blink. You pick off Marine, pull back, pick off Marine, pull back, kill a siege tank, you know, force him to siege up. Okay, now we'll back off. When he unsieges and comes forward, we'll fight again, right? So that's the whole stalker thing, right? So where does that become weak? So this falls off if they get like stim, right? Or, or just, you know, stim um, and like a super heavy, heavy bio count. So if they manage to get an expansion and three barracks up or even a one base three barracks, if you stay too long on just stalkers and just stalkers and they're not actually trying to do pressure, then that's where we're going to have trouble. Oh, I built 12 stalkers. My twilight never went down, etc. Okay, so that's that's kind of what we need to be aware of because this isn't entirely set in stone. It's a rather dynamic situation. 
But my point here is in this scenario, seeing what we can see, we've got God's view. I look at this and say, all you should be doing is building stalkers nonstop. This guy doesn't have a command center. He's building hellions and marines and a medevac and tanks and battlecruiser. Basically, the just keep building stalker response <clears throat> and saturate two mineral lines, two gases, get up to like four gates of stalker production even. That's actually all you need here to survive. So I guess what we could argue here is just two base minerals plus two gas, right? Two gas. A robo for extra scouting. Because that's what—that that's the first point where you can 100% know what's going on, right? Is this observer getting across? So I love that you got the robo and chrono the observer. But the idea here is, I guess we'd probably try to get up to four gates just so we have a lot of, a, a, a fair bit of production. Because otherwise, if it is just raw one base all in, all we need is just more units. We just need things to hang on, right? Technically, if we can get a robo bay for Colossus or something like that, or a charge up to deal with the, the stim army, that's something that as things grow, that'll be a problem. But for now, at this stage, it's just about, let's make sure we don't rush too far in the tech. Because you've gone two gateways, but remember, you haven't used them so much, right? You've only got five stalkers and now you're a little supply block that we're going for tech and that sort of stuff. Um, does that all make sense? Yeah, okay. So that's more unit production, right? And I've always been kind of a greedy player, so I can see why this is, you know, the kind of thing it struggle with. So. Yeah, well, if you think about it, if you overcommit to units, it's not the end of the world. Because if they do any pressure, it just gives you more units to shut it down with. And it also can can be turned into your own attacks. The danger with this sort of situation is, oh, well, what if they are actually just macroing up and I can't really use these units effectively? It's like, you need to have another plan of how, okay, how can I make this into more effective stuff? Uh, not watching your mini map. You've got stalkers in position, but you're not watching your mini map. Ah, you staring at your observer. <laughs> okay. Ah, it's all good. You focus fired it. Oh, for no, you gotta finish it. Oh, no. You gotta kill that medevac. Kill the medevac. Thankfully, he decided to focus my stalkers instead of, you know. Yeah, that was nice of him, especially with the Hellion. <clears throat> Pull back that weak stalker. That's all right. So this was acceptable losses. And you're going charge, yeah. So I actually, um, I, I used to go charge in this situation and I stopped just because I felt it was a bit too hard to get up the gateways. And I, I often was on so many stalkers from earlier without blink that I felt like adding a Colossus and like, or oh, a sentry or two. So a few force fields and a Colossus to me felt like it made my army incredible versus bio play. So that was always my way of doing it because even here, right? You've got charge. You don't have any zealots right now. Once your gateways kick in, you'll still only be at five gate zealot production. So I, I feel like if you were going Zealots here in this game, you're like, oh yeah, cool. I'll get Zealots and upgrades and Colossus. You're going back to your default mode as if this is a macro game. Let's look at his economy. Let's imagine he had an expansion. Even if he had an expansion, he'd have a couple of workers on it, right? So the idea of us going for plus one upgrades, Colossus Bay, all this sorts of stuff, it doesn't actually make sense. So this I made this mistake the other day, actually. I shut down... Was it Jason's opening? And then I kind of just went the default mode and he just like, he had an expansion, but he just like grabbed his unupgrade, did one of those unupgraded Marine tank pushes and with two cloakless banshees. And I was like, oh shit, I just didn't have enough stuff. And I died to it. And I was like, looking at it, I was like, dude, I, I shut down his first pressure. Was this not a good situation for me? And then I was like, wait a second. He actually like, yes, he's got three barracks and that looks like a normal thing but he didn't actually have add-ons on two of those barracks. His command center had a couple of workers. And, you know, I was I was looking at things as if it was, oh, normally when I'm scouting with my observer at this point, I show you the, the, the command center, you know, but workers, three barracks. I'm thinking there's no threat till stim and shields, but this was, you know, the, these early situations are a little bit more fucked up. <laughs> They're a bit more, more crazy variability that can come your way. So we need to be a little bit more um, contained and focused. So, I think to hit that point home, and this is what I need to remind myself of in this situation, you have a fucking massive economy advantage, right? And when you build a big economy advantage, you need to make sure you don't die. Upgrades and tech don't do that, right? Just having more stuff does. And this is why I want to bring it back to that understanding. Your stalkers and your nonstop stalker production falls off really hard at a certain point if they go for stim and shields and get that up with medevacs, right? That's the scary point. If that never happens, 
all you need is gateway units. You're kind of like a Zerg player massing roaches to defend an immortal push. Roaches and lings aren't better than immortals and sentries, but you've built a 15 worker advantage. You've got so much more, it's all fine. It's the exact same sort of scenario here where we need to just turn that economy into as much shit as possible as quickly as possible. So I think that's something that we need to kind of enshrine in our head. And when we think of it that way, we go, oh yeah, actually I could spend a lot longer building shit gateway units and actually be safe by doing that. So um, I think that's something we can do. And I think we need to be clear on, we're going to go the robo no matter what for the scouting. Do we go charge every game or do we go Colossus? Because it needs to be one or the other up to a third base from there. And if you're going to play a normal game, you, you end up kind of hemming yourself on two base a little bit here, but also going to it a bit too late. Whereas if you say went charge and a plus one upgrade or something, we just go for minerals on our third and we would never take the gases on our natural even, but we could get a quick third up off the back of zealots, right? It's the advantage of making mineral only units. Get your eight gates, get your third base, bam. If we go Colossus, we'd be a bit more focused on getting these gases up on the natural very early, adding a few sentries in. Um, which one of those appeals to you as the, the first step? So, so charge or colossus? Which, hello? I'm sorry, I forgot to press my push to talk. Um, oh, okay, <laughs> no worries. So, um, I'm a lot more used to colossus play, so um, probably just stick with colossus, since. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Whichever one you prefer, really. Yeah, the problem I th I think the only problem I have with that is anything with tanks in it would just kind of start being a problem i guess if they go really hard on like well hmm. not not really colossus beat the shit out of all the bio with the tanks it's just you can't let them just walk up and siege on your base right that's the the whole the whole thing there right so if, if he was say to do a push this sort of push ignore the battle cruiser that's a complication this sort of push you're not like ah my colossus isn't ready i can't engage it away from my base because that's the sort of push that you just get out there with your stalkers and just start picking it off and forcing him to siege far away from your base. And it's the same thing with Colossus. You've just got to force him to siege far away from your base. Colossus beats the shit out of Biotank. It's just about actually being able to move out and fight them on the map. So if you're in a if you're in a good enough position, you should always be able to fight them at least a bit further away from your base. And um, yeah, and that can work out very well. So. I wouldn't worry too much oh, if he's going tanks, you know, that's going to be good versus Colossus, whereas Charge Lots are better versus tanks. I mean, technically, yes, if we could see absolutely everything in the game, which you, you can't. You can't make these decisions counteractively, to what, reactively to what your opponent does. You're not going to see it in time. It takes too long to get to Colossus or Charge. But technically, yeah, okay, he's never going to go Stim Bio. Sweet, we could go Charge Zealots, right? because they're not as big a threat. Okay, in this case, we went charge zealots, but he only built one tank. He actually has three racks up and a big ball of marine marauder with upgrades. My zealots aren't really cutting it, you know, unless I had a really big economy advantage or something like that. Okay, that's that's not perfect. I think it's more important to just choose what you're comfortable with. I mean, both of them have their weaknesses. Zealots, if they got uh, mine production coming out early, if they do a three racks mine push and you're relying on zealots, oh Jesus Christ, if they keep mine production going nonstop, that's not, not fantastic either. But it's more about what you're comfortable with and your fundamentals. So don't let fear decide what you want. What feels better for you as a Protoss player? Do you feel more in your element with Colossus or Zealots? Probably Colossus in PT, yeah. Cool. Just because okay. I like sort of shaping off the bio units a lot. Transition into Robo Bay and third and fourth gas for Colossus to hit before stim, etc. preferably. Okay, cool. So with that that style, it's like literally you're getting up to four gates with just observers to see everything. And it's all about stalkers being able to pick off units when they come across the map and that sort of stuff. And um, yeah, we'd be all good. This is a great pro pool, by the way. If you'd been building gateway units off four gates, like we talked about, didn't have those gases, didn't bother with the twilight and the forge, right? Uh, like, look at this fight. This this one's actually really obvious when you think about it. Look at how few units you have. You've only got four zealots, five stalkers. You could easily have so much more. If you think about the money that's tied up in plus one Colossus, you know, all these other things you've built, easiest hold of your life, right? If you just have like 
a few more stalkers and zealots here. So yeah, yeah. Even without the pro pool, you should have been able to defend this quite quite well, and that's cool. That tells yeah, it's just you know if you look at how you died to this push, that should be very obvious. So for your own learning and understanding, you should look at the end of this game, bird's eye god view. Say so he's on one base, I'm on two. So I've gone to an epic economy advantage. And I've gone three different techs, Robo Bay, Forge, and Twilight. And my army is simply way smaller than his and worse quality because none of that tech's properly kicked in yet, right? Charge is the only tech you've actually got available. So this is a game, do you think you you kind of picked up on the fact that you were too greedy at the end of this yeah, one? Definitely, definitely. But it's more, it's more of sort of like a principle of kind of one base stuff. Yeah. And yeah it was like well how do i keep ending up being so greedy right but that's that's the first big clue right so if we were to reverse engineer it we would have gone back and gone okay well how how was i so greedy and i think this was pretty good up until that point where was it four minutes when was it it was even earlier than that yeah yeah check this out this is actually quite early when you start not building your army strength and going in different directions so um don't wall off the front as well because tank pushes are always going to be a thing and by the time you built this, it's kind of past the Hellion stage almost anyway, a little bit, not completely, but I would say just don't be walling off in this scenario because follow-up fast tank pushes like what he's doing are very scary. And if you wall off your own base, that's a bummer. So I, I would never do it. It's your call, of course, but uh, don't wall off the base. Um, and you'd be going... So that Twilight would instead have been not there that would have been a third and fourth gateway instead right yeah we could argue your probe count could be a lot higher as well i think i think you've probably missed probes up to this point a few times right trying to be safe let's go take a look yeah definitely so yeah we're missing tons of probes in the early game i was thinking your robo was incredibly fast yeah and it is so your robo is very quick the downside of building a quick robo, you don't have as much uh, probe production. So that's a payoff that is up to you. If you prefer having that vision earlier, that's awesome. Go for it. Just keep in mind that that plus stalker production, you're cutting quite a lot of probes here while tr trying to figure out what the hell is happening. You're building a shield battery, you're building stalkers, you're building your robo. I think this is totally playable, but let's write this as an option. Option. My man. Uh, delay robo and build probes non-stop from early on much smoother much smoother path so because you're kind of like doubling down on the defense right for a stalker shield battery as fast as possible 100 percent defense to this point but then we go back full economy and i don't think we really take any safety measures from 345 to later on right what do we do to build the strength of our army i mean obviously that drop does surprise us which is a bit of a bummer does a bit more than it should forces a few more stalker warpins i guess and we but you can see he doesn't have an expansion at this point right so i think you were distracted if we look at your camera vision did we look at our scout here we did we're sending stalkers around the edge of the map we're building some zealots yeah, if you're on charge tech, let's imagine we go back to defending that drop. You're in this position where you're going charge. You've just defended this drop. What exactly would you prioritize in this situation if you could take control right now with this setup? Um, more gates. So probably fourth, fifth gate. Maybe try. I think a third is probably a bit too greedy. Now I've seen that there's no actual second base um so they yeah fourth and fifth gateways and uh zealot production i guess and that should be basically everything from the next so you've said zealot production and two gateways yeah look at how much money you have you can afford more than that first of all cancel your probes there's no reason you should be putting probes right now you've already got a third gas which is more than you need if I were you, I absolutely agree. Zealot production probably takes priority, but I would build four gateways and zealots and chrono the gateways and build zealots because you've got plenty of supply free already, which kind of tells us we messed up a bit, right? Because remember, ideally, especially going charge, if we could like 
just hug that supply, get the gateways down, then have the pylon explosion, it would have been a bit nicer. We haven't had the gateway explosion yet, but we've kind of every bit of minerals. If you think about it, every extra pylon you've built is like almost a gateway that could have been started earlier, right? And that's yeah. just one of those those little things. But then because so we're both not getting the gateway explosion, building pylons a little early and going gas and diversifying the tech, you can see it all stacks on top of each other, right? So I would say, dude, like I'd get four, four or five gateways even. I'd go straight to seven or eight gateways. You've got two mineral lines. You can easy make zealots off eight gateways. And um, yeah, and seeing that setup at his side of the map as you, I would be like, oh, okay, let's send the stalkers across to start wearing down this push. Because I'd be like, man, there's a push that's probably going to come. If we do that, if we don't, it doesn't matter. But if you were just building zealots from there, this would be awesome. Because even even if you just built zealots, and then you're like, whoa, there's a battle cruiser. It doesn't matter. You, you're going to wipe his ground army, A, move your zealots across the map, and you'll be able to warp in stalkers off eight gateways to deal with a battle cruiser. Battle cruiser is not unbeatable, especially with a shield battery at your natural. If it fights there, you can just overcharge that battery. Battle cruiser can't do any damage, has to go into your main. You'd be fine. So the battle cruiser is not really a threat, but that's kind of cool because what are we focusing on? What gives us that clarity? Just knowing what your strong point is, right? So even if you'd gone Colossus here, where it's like, oh, you kind of want the gas on your natural to build both Colossus, Stalkers, and Sentries, um, you would still potentially be like, whoa, he's on one base. Let's not build any more probes. And maybe you'd pull off mineral saturation on your natural to saturate your third and fourth gas, right? So maybe yeah. you only have 10 workers on minerals plus the two gases. Because... There's no reason for you to go above 40 probes against a one base player. This is already an exceptional lead, right? Mm -hmm. So all you need to do in this situation yeah. is survive. Early on, you got your natural up, you built 30 plus probes. What did you do to survive? Shield battery plus stalkers. That was perfect. Next stage of the game, later attacks, whether it be Colossus and gateway production, bam, bam, bam. Colossus gateway, Colossus gateway, Colossus gateway, and nothing else but that and pylons or Mass Zealot Gateway, Mass Zealot Gateway, bam, 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 pylons. As long as you're building towards that strong point, and if you then see, oh, my opponent floats a command center down and actually transfers SCVs, oh shit, he actually is macroing, you can always set up for a pretty good timing attack with that. It's a bit harder with Colossus, but if you catch him on siege or his tanks are a little forward or anything, there's still chances there, or you can kind of wait outside his base, and if he moves down to take a third, you can jump on him or something like that. There's always ways we can do it. With, with Zealots, you can often just charge in the front full YOLO, right because they're such a, a simple unit drop a prism in the back if you can bam 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 take him out so that's that's really cool just always think about it in terms of what is our really strong army where we want to fight our opponent early on once we get four stalkers or, or more it's like we really want to be engaging him on the map and bam 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 fight again later when your colossus kicks in and Think of it in terms of we want to actually be attacking with it. This is why right from the start, your first stalker goes across the map and hits his his main. Just goes into his natural, hits his main. Because a stalker beats the shit out of a single marine or reaper or anything like that. And it's going to see what's going on. It's going to really force you to use your advantages when you have them. And it's going to take you out of that defensive mindset, which is really important in these scenarios. The number one way players throw games from ahead against aggression is we get ahead and then we just kind of oh shit what do i do now and we kind of just start doing all the tech and upgrades but we never use the advantage that we built and sometimes that other player gets super greedy behind it or they just come with another wave of all in whereas if we at least look for the attack we look for that strong army and that move out and then macro behind that we can pick up a lot of free wins. We keep our finger on the pulse of the game. You'll just find you have a much better understanding of what's happening in the game and uh, and you actually use your advantages when you have it. And that's that's super duper powerful. So I just want you to always, at any stage when the game gets fucked, fucked up, try to visualize what the next strong point is in your army when some tech kicks in and some rounds of units and try to think about that as a big focal point. And that's going to give you some really clear direction in the the murky waters of what the fuck is this Terran player doing, man? <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay, it makes sense. Basically, just double down on more units. That's yeah. I mean, <laughs> and it's a and it's a preset point, right? So looking at looking at your your document, so you just just that's the most important part there, right? You see what I just put in bold. So because we're just building stalkers, that. And, and then we need to go into that. It's like, that is the part for the early defense. 
but then trying to squeeze in the robo bay in the third and fourth gas if we feel it you know at a certain point now I don't know if you're going to need a set timing for Robo Bay third, fourth gas, or if that's going to be a specific thing you do after seeing something in the game. I don't know. I think with an observer, I think that's more of a, I can see what happens. You can feel it out, right? Yeah. I think so. I think that should be good. Um, Especially since if I, if I go the early Robo, I get my observer out quite early and I can just rally into the main instead of doing what I did and getting it killed later in the natural. Yeah, I mean, it's good to check the natural, right? Because just seeing if they have an expansion first can be nice, right? It's like, hey, but it, yeah, it would have been great if you saw the fusion core. I don't think it really matters because you saw no expand marine tank set up. So you kind of knew what was happening anyway. And uh, even if you started your robo bay and gases now, that would be fine. But even if not, even if we were just building units off four gateways with no upgrades, that still would have defeated his push. It would have, because he builds up for quite a long time, it does hit a bit of an awkward point, right? Because he's like, oh, two tanks and a pretty big pack of Marines. It's like, you don't really like fighting that with just stalkers and like adepts with no upgrades. Um, a single sentry can be super powerful though, right? Against this sort of push. Having guardian shield is epic against this army. So that is something to keep in mind um, when you're building these stalkers. And I think if you're doing that four gate unit production, you will, you will naturally do it. Um... Yeah, so Zealot production, four to five gateways. If we took control, uh, let me just kind of add a note there, I guess, of that single sentry. Um, single sentry for Guardian Shield is a game changer versus the heavy unupgraded Marines uh, versus unupgraded gateway units. Yeah, and that's something we can feel our way through now that we've got the, the very big awareness of the situation in terms of, oh, you know what? Uh, if I don't have a Colossus, I kind of suck first bio, right? <laughs> this is shit. Like, okay, this guy hit 30 Marines with Stim or something. Like, okay, not having a Colossus bad, but there's going to be some points in the middle where it's like, nah, I actually could have done this if I just used my gateway units better. I think that's actually my only PVT we've played, but um, I do have a PVZ we can look at as well. Sure. Um, Kill Kenny does offer. He says, I always lose to Protoss. I'd volunteer as sparring partner. I think you guys could maybe I, practice I later, <laughs> but Kill Kenny plays like such a weirdo that um, as much as his one... I, I've seen be, some games, yes. Yeah, he would be He would be very good practice, um, but I think maybe we just watch some, some replays. Yeah, if we watch a PVZ and just kind of overview the other matchups. Um... But Kilkenny would be be great practice because he'd throw so many variables at you and be hard to read, hard to... You, you, yeah, that's the sort of play. With Kilkenny, you're going to have to go back to fundamental analysis rather than, you know, oh, yeah, this means this and this means this and, and blah, blah, blah. Cool. Um, all right, there we go. Uh, big thanks, yeah, Cassidy. We've done... um, Cassidy and Grimson. Thank you, guys. Sorry, what were you saying? I don't think we've done PVT before, so I I do DT drop into a sort of free base push. -ish. This is a very high level of and... by the way. This was a 40, yeah, almost almost 4700 MMR. That's pretty high, man. I do manage to barely eke out a win, but I feel like there's quite a lot of things we could have improved on in terms of sort of early game response especially since everyone is doing 12 pulls or early pulls or stuff like that and i feel like i kind of flail when i get 12 pulled well not necessarily I, I have an okay response but i don't know if i'm ahead or if i'm behind or if i'm sort of even and i don't yeah. really know how they go from there i think of it as just like a different situation right um with its own little details to memorize so so we should be queuing right up to 20, 20 supplies straight away on probes, right? Because we're going to do that every game. So I would always say with your early build order, get in the habit of that if you can. And this probe should already be rallied to the natural, right? So yeah, we're kind of doing that at the last second. Just something to be aware of. Try to do that stuff earlier if you can. Now, when you came into block, wait a second. Let's, let's, this was, you, you gateway scouted. Okay. So you th you thought it was pool first, so you went for the pylon block, was it? Uh, it's either 
people typically just go 12 pull into like expansion right now so i, but I just you didn't know it was a, you didn't know it was a 12 pull oh, okay so you you, you kind of just face 12 pull or hatch first is it you yeah know? almost almost always there's very little like 14 16 pulls kind of thing so so seeing I that drone you already you that. actually assumed it oh, okay cool cool Wait, you still go Nexus? Oh no. Okay, so a little bit late on your 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 dealing with that, right? I feel like a bit late on the core, yes. Yeah. And I forgot to cancel the pilot after I dropped the block. Yeah, and you haven't. Yeah, so you need to get behind off this. You didn't change your rally point back at home either to the gas. There we go. Okay, second pylon. And are we gonna wall off with the second gate? Yeah. 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 Oh, you got your zealot surrounded. No, get back. Bad control. You've got such a great wall off here. Delaying that gateway is what's making this way harder than it needs to be, right? Because if that was finished, it's got an armor and it's just got more hit points. So because only four Zerglings can hit that gateway, you should have started that gateway earlier. It would have made your life so much easier, right? You've got the money for it the whole time as well. Are you? It's actually not in pylon range. Oh, it's not okay. In the first pylon range. I so oh yeah okay i saw that when you when you first placed your pylon I, I noticed that i was like oh that pylon's wrong but then i assumed you were going to leave the choke point on the top left so leaving the choke point where you was was a big mistake if you just simply built your buildings the cyber core up against the gateway and then the other gateway up above it you could have had a single space gap on the top left of the wall in and it would have been acceptable um but obviously you didn't notice so okay fair enough <laughs> that happens yeah, there's a few, quite a few mistakes in this game <laughs> but that's just going to make things way harder than it needs to be because you just didn't need to be as risky with your zealot like poking out a tiny bit's good but you should be making sure that you're not you're not getting surrounded if you're losing your zealots like this for like one or two zerglings yeah usually i would say the opening usually favors the zerg in that scenario if you can keep all your units alive that zealot adept counter attack is truly the great equalizer you know um Okay, that's uh, making you a little list here. CVP, PVZ, well, pool replay. Okay, uh, misplaced pylon, and a little slow on second gate and core while pylon blocking. Uh, maybe go straight into main to confirm rather than screwing so if that's a pattern that you keep making that mistake of like you're running around with your probe at the natural putting down a pylon um yeah just try to go into the main a bit quicker to get earlier warning in future if you need to do that okay if you don't that's fine um so you've got your nexus down wait did we go second gas before nexus or after let's double check Ooh, we went really quick second gas are you still planning to do a dt drop yes Okay, big mistake then. That Nexus is so important. It's already been so delayed. We kind of get in this habit of, ah, oh, I might as well just drop a second gas, but get the Nexus down first. Now, in this case, it didn't matter that much, but sometimes things get scrappy enough. that, that in, You get that, you put you guys on gas, and then you just, the Nexus just keeps getting delayed. So try to prioritize Nexus more important than second gas, right? Um, that's, that's hugely important. So it should be Nexus then second gas and then third pylon is usually the order obviously it depends a little on how the defense has gone at the front but uh but yeah so in this case we should be adept pressuring immediately with these two adepts right yeah i'm actually waiting there we go you're just waiting for the stalker all right yep and if you had the zealots out i would have gone with the very first adept um even right while waiting for another adept to pop out and if you've got an adept halfway built a few lings run in who cares that adept will clean it up your two zealots and adept just need to go over there and killing this third base is is just so sick right um if you have zealots it's so easy to kill a third that's building it's amazing so i think i accidentally have to my um adept's back as well which is really bad mm, that's a shame so yeah because he he doesn't have any um Ling speed and he hasn't built a tumor at the front so the proper zerg defense is tumor at the front bring both queens down to force the shade out nice and early and get some damage and then the zerglings cover the shade right now this player doesn't have any of that however has built 10 zerglings so has respected the adepts if they don't build those zerglings then obviously we should be able to shade in and, and kick their ass but that's that's the good to keep in mind um 
so one of the funny things that happens is your, your Archon drop, DT drop's always going to get a bit kind of weird in this situation. Massive props for the non-stop pro production. You're doing a really good job of keeping that up. That's the big thing which people get a bit caught out on because the timings are a bit different and they just mess that up and things are end up being a bit all over the place. You're looking really focused on that. I think we already need to have an extra pylon queued because your build's going to be a little scrappier in this scenario. It's very nice if you can build extra pylons a little ahead of time, even if it slows your build down because things aren't going to click together quite the way you're used to. Um, normally, after you start the prism, you would build a pylon. We've forgotten it. We've gone straight for the gases. You normally go pylon after prism. Pylon, prism, gas, gas, right? I go gas, gas, pylon. Okay. Actually. Oh, we are so going to remember them. They're a little late. We should get a third pylon as well, I believe. I think we really need a third pylon, right? Because otherwise you're going to get supply blocked right after yeah. warping yeah. in the DTs. Um, Tend to remember the third one at some point. I don't know when that happens. Yeah, I, it looks like, I mean, it'll be okay for now. Um, no probe set up on the third base yet. That's an issue, right? Because that, that should always be there just to be set up so that we're not trying to send over and secure the third. Like having the Adept already in the mineral line, guarding that base and the probe over there just makes your life so much easier. Oh, because you can see now we've, we're, we're managing. Yeah, this is this is the problem. So if you, you've warped in DTs, you're not doing anything with them. You're thinking about taking a third slash maybe even pressuring with the Adepts. But then if those Adepts shaded out, the Stalker wouldn't have been in the wall. Your probe hasn't been sent over there. So we start to suddenly have to juggle multiple situations. That's where the power of setting up that Adept in the mineral line at the third ahead of time. Um, or in this case, it would have been two Adepts getting a pylon started. Even if your Nexus gets cancelled to a pylon, that's fine. It's just the fact that you'd already have that set up would make a big difference here because I think we're going to end up taking a little bit longer than we need to to get things going. So you guys decide that... to yep. straight up Archon drop here instead of DT dropping because of the early game stuff. Yeah, and that's just a judgment so, yeah. call. Whichever one you prefer, right? Because you never know which one will work. You don't really know how this opponent's playing. Um, could have picked off the Overlord for free. That's okay. So... At this point, you should be making a very good screen analysis from what you see with these Archons. What are you thinking when you see this? No drones on the third. A yeah. uh, bunch of Ravagers, Overseer, Spores. No drones on third, lots of army. I would just dumb it down to that much, right? <laughs> it's just, oh, okay, shit. And since you already haven't even committed to your third, if I was you here... I would just gear up for a two base push, essentially. Why? Because how the fuck are you going to get out to a third? You haven't started building observers or immortals. And we don't have the chance to build shield batteries because our third's not established yet. So if he comes across the map, we're going to have to cancel it no matter what. So would I still be looking to try to get the third up? Yes, but I'd be very ready to cancel it. I might not even, I'd only build one pylon at it, for instance, right? I wouldn't build anything else. And instead, I would be saying, let's make charge. Let's get a few sentries. Let's get uh, four more gateways in my main. So that if my third gets canceled, I've still got a really good giant army I can make to either stop his all in or do my own big attack. Uh, maybe I just end up taking a third later. Maybe my third does get up and I go back to probing. But I, I might shift gears. Whereas if you'd already got the third started by this point in a pylon, those adepts had cleared up, which they easily could have, by the way. We've got four adepts at home, right? Um, then that would have been something where I might be like, oh, okay, you know, Chrono Immortals, get some units up at that that base. I'd still be building gateways in the main, no matter what, though. So that's a really cool little thing where if you recognize that you're not sure you're going to be able to defend your third base, because, I mean, he could be on 35 workers for all you know. You don't, he could be on almost no economy. He's only on 39, so he's not even on two base economy. We don't know that, but we know he's maximum 45 workers. We're on 50. And we're building Archons and Immortals and upgrades and stuff. So we're building a way higher tier army than, than our opponent, right? Um, no drones on third, lots of army. Go to eight gates in main, start charge, build towards a sick two base push. Still be still take third, but be ready to cancel it. Be be mental. I would say be mentally prepared to give it up. That's all. So I'm not saying put ourselves in the mindset of, ah, oh, I'm going to lose it. 
but do that. Now also you go immortal first here. I think you should always go observer because you have no sentries and now you're not building an observer. So at this point in the game, this Archon drop is everything. It is your only information gathering device. And that's a bad position to be in because is he going muters behind this? Is he droning that third? Or is he coming to attack us? You don't know. And that's why that observer, after you warp in the DTs, queuing an observer has got to be like just linked up to that and having it out the middle. I was coaching um, Ryan just the other day. He was like, man, how do you defend the roach counter attacks? And he was showing me a replay of like a game he threw. And I was like, oh, your, your observer just is not in the right position. Just the observer has to see them moving across the map, right? So if your observer goes across and if it's still going across, sometimes you miss it, right? Because there's like two paths. But once it gets out front their base, like set up in a, a pervert position, it can see, oh, they're rallying units or they're building drones. And that's really powerful. Um, warp in DTs, immediate obs. You have to see if they're droning or attacking. Oh no, we're moving to our third. No, go, get back, get back in your base. Uh, you're lucky that a lot of his road ravage is in the top left, actually. But, um, they're chasing. Yeah. <laughs> you can't. Oh my god. Is it, uh, I, I like that you're annoying him. I don't like that we're doing it when we're only on four gateways. You did make charge, which is good. But um, once again, we're building three pylons and Nexus. Like this is all good stuff, but it's just, yeah, for me, I'd be like, dude, eight gate. If we can get eight gate up, there's just a point where you're like, oh, cool. Make a wave of like Archons, like add another Archon or two, three, four Archons, 10 charge zealots and a mortal or two. Ravager Ling, worst army ever, right? You're just going to shit on it. You're just going to laugh at how bad this army is. So, I mean, we're lucky because your opponent really should be doing an all-in. Oh, he should not be fighting with the Zerglings like that. Committing committing to a cancel there was a really bad move for him. Yeah, that was... Because it. it should all be about army versus army. Now he starts droning and going double Evo chamber. The Zerg is drunk. Oh, what the fuck? He's super drunk. <laughs> you, you, I think you tilted him off the face of the earth with your Archon drop micro. Well done. <laughs> Good job, man. That was awesome. Um, yeah. So now he's just making really stupid Zerg decisions. Yeah. This is like you, you put him back to his default uh, cave Zerg brain. You know, we have our caveman yeah. brain. Cave Zerg brain is run Zerglings into bad fights repeatedly and uh, build a giant army, then don't use it and then drone. Uh, but kind of lock yourself in from behind. But yeah, notice you've still got no vision, right? So we're missing those pieces. Whether, yeah, if you don't have a, a bunch of sentries up early spamming hallucinations, it's got to be the observer. And I think the observer is good. So how how consistent are you with that observer in this matchup? In a, in a more calm uh, game, I imagine you're pretty good usually, at it. Yeah, usually I have it out, but it's sort of this when it goes into sort of weird tall pole situations that I don't really know what's happening. And then I yeah. build an immortal because I'm scared of the roach count kind of thing exactly but that actually gets you killed a lot more the observer is actually what gives you safety because even if you have immortals you could walk out into the open here bam they come in with roach thing you didn't see it till it's on you and that's actually what gets you killed so the observer takes almost no build time it is so fast so cheap so i want you to reprogram first of all observer equals safety in your brain number one number two warp in dt's q observer off your hotkey with your next 75 gas so it should always be morph archons you should have another 75 gas by then if you don't already cue, cue the observer because that's consistent no matter what happened in the early game and in this sort of game you probably have extra gas yeah you do because 12 pool so things don't line up perfectly that's natural this is not you being bad in any way but yeah if we queued an observer right here dude totally different game that would be beautiful so um i would say a few things Nexus, more important than second gas you mentioned earlier, but yeah, no, no. More importantly, have Adept plus Probe on third before warping in DTs. Get yourself set up. Get yourself set up. That is huge as well. Just because if you had that third up this game or earlier, that would have been amazing. And I could imagine you would have even potentially split two of these Adepts down the right-hand side. 
And when he's chasing you around the left-hand side, and even if he gets a cancel on your third, like he did with the Zerglings, you'd have two Adepts shade in and kill six or seven workers and really tilt, tilt him off the face of the earth because he does not have a big economy at any point in this game. So that would have been awesome for you, man. Awesome. Yeah, notice you're still only on four gateways. Beware the scrappy game. Beware the scrappy game. Remember that throw the gateways down in the main. Whenever a game gets dicey against a low econ Zerg, get up to eight gates in the main. There we go. Finally, there we go. Dicey game versus low econ Zerg? Question mark? Eight gates in the main. Um, if ahead, but worried about muta swaps, etc. Just simplify the game by killing, killing him off charge arc on immortal sentry. Like that push where you use it more as like a fake third, you like maybe get a handful of probes, but not too many. And then you just, because your gateways are up from earlier and you're like, oh, he's not actually attacking me. That's fine. And you just move across basically with this sort of army here, except maybe a few more zealots, maybe a few less probes on your third. And that's such a good way to do it. And even as it is, oh, he's going to come to you. Oh, crazy. Get him, get him. Don't, don't let him get away. You can A-move that. As long as you keep warping in Zealots here, you should be A-moving that army. That's not a scary... So why is he pushing into you? Dude, what a Chad. This Zerg player has the biggest balls I've ever seen. You're not warping in Zealots. Yeah. If you just rallied Zealots into that fight, that would have been a lot smoother for you if you just Chad man moded him a little bit quicker there. So you, just a little bit of indecisiveness. And why were you indecisive? It's because you didn't know what the fuck was behind it. That comes off the Observer. If you have the vision of this coming across the map, you're going to size that army up, go, you know what, that's not that scary. You might have even moved out here and like force fielded across that area and totally shut him down. Because your army is best in the open, set up in an arc, dropping force fields a little bit, right? Not complete wide open area, but somewhere where you can set up a proper combat line. Because if you don't have that spread, the, the biles are really annoying, right? So well done here. But if you had more information, that observer, hallucination see this coming, easiest fight of your life would have been amazing. The left interface is just run by here, which forces a warp in a home. And then I don't want to keep warp in the tank. That right there. Yeah, just distracts you a little bit. Yeah, the power of the Zerglings, man. If, if you had a wave of Zealots come in there, I guess, I mean, you had eight gateways, didn't you? Or were those four in the main not quite? Oh, they were just finishing in the fight, weren't they? Ah, okay, yeah, they were a few seconds off finishing. Yeah, if those eight gateways were up early, because I was like, oh yeah, you only warped in two on the left, but that's all you had. Okay, fair enough. So there, yeah, we can see how those earlier pieces would have made this even easier for you. Um, looks like you keep a fair number of Immortals alive, so you're fine. You're still up on economy. And yeah, you left your Stalker in your wall. Good discipline, mate. Good discipline. Yeah, this is good play. I think um, from here, it's just how decisive are you going to be in this game, right? That's, that's the only thing that worries me for a Protoss in this situation is like, I don't really like the cannons and batteries on your third base. I don't think that achieves anything. It's, to me, it's like, eh, maybe one cannon, one battery is okay. But I think it's like not really necessary because your fourth base, and as we can see, because we're hacking, the spy or the muters in the main are actually kind of the soft spots. I actually think because you dicked his army, kept your immortals alive, just adding some archons and zealots to be solid versus circling reinforce, and you should have been very confident there. I like that you're finally starting to do some pressure into his base. Um, and it looks like you're going to push the front at the same time. So that's really well done. Because if you sat back any longer, these muters could have been a big damaging surprise factor. But because they're only hitting you as you're going into his base, it's all fine. Well done. That's, that's good. You know, not sitting on your lead for too long, but making sure you're actually trying to do stuff with it. Good job, dude. Yeah, I think we maybe could have moved a little further forward there with that micro. Overall, really good micro, dude. I'm very impressed. But I think after that you dodged those biles, you actually should have moved onto him maybe even a little more. Let's let's just look. Like here, I don't think we need to be started stepping back. 
You did like that one, that one there. That's the one I don't like the disengage on because I think you're fucking those roaches and ravages up. And if you just stand your ground, you want to keep doing that. Basically, the reason there is, right, anytime all your immortals are fighting and your zealots and your archons, like as long as he's not massively overwhelming you, you're good. But whenever you pull back, notice your immortals are going to start getting stuck behind each other while he's still got a lot of roaches and ravages kind of killing your zealots and archons. So anytime you can get those forces all fighting together, it's really nice. I can, this is, this is me super nitpicking because like I said, you did most things great. But if we just watch that last two seconds again, I think that was like, let's uh you know that that's a point where i'm like oh i, th I really think we could have just stood our ground there this was a great force field trap a good little stutter step um our zealots didn't really jump on him there but yeah i think we just pulled back a little bit too much and you can see quite a few of the immortals kind of get stuck behind each other um it's hard to be perfect in this fight especially because you've got muters on the other side of the map you know you got shit stressing you out it's not easy but um yeah i i love the probe pull on your third by the way fantastic really well done very well done at this case, your main army's been worn down, so I like that you go to the left. Attacking through Ravages is a pretty bad idea. So that's that's a really good way of just going, let's go get some shore damage. Keep warping in units, Stalker's deal at home. Well done, mate. Yeah, well done. I think you did some really good prioritization of this army. So is it normally just the weird build orders that throw you off? The 12 pool, the, it just throws off your momentum, your timing a little bit, and then you you miss a few of those pieces, like the the sentries, the observers. Like, Do you think those things are normally all there earlier and it's just when the opening changes? Um, do you the, think maybe I think just, that's part of it, yeah. yeah. The other problem I'm having with PVZ right now is, well, there's two actually other problems. One of them is representing Bane, which I feel like, I sort of just walk a whole bunch of zealots into banelings and die. I think that part of that is probably just me not paying attention to my attack when it happens and walking my zealots forward. And the other part of it is I just have no clue what to do in terms of the sort of micro game state of what to do against rabbit drilling banelings. Since I'm kind of undecided between like turtling on four base and then going to sky toss, which is what I've seen to be a decent response to rabbit drilling bane, and I kind of like that. But also, I kind of want faster games, so yeah. Um, well, Ravager Ling Bane, I mean, it's quite meaty. It's very, yeah. So look, Zealots aren't a frontal fighting army unit against it. So just the, the only thing I'd say is, look, Zealots are just a support unit. That's all they are. That's the big mental change you need to have. Zealots are just support units. So your main army, main army, Zealots can be added or used a little, but only to engage after the banelings are all gone so they're literally a reserve force so what is that really for their real purpose is just run by us and and backstabs and warp ins in their main stuff right you just want your zealots to trade out against individual zerglings and roaches and drones and stuff so you're adding storm right normally against that army yeah yeah so you're just trying to poke with main army, clear creep, bait them into storms, right? And zealots backstab constantly at the same time. And you could just grow. And that, that is the best way to do it, where Ravager Bane is so grossly cost inefficient. Um, if they're doing this thing where they're actually managing to get up to a huge economy and it feels like they can just replenish constantly... Just remember that DT backstabs can also be absolute game changers. So if they're not building spores and stuff everywhere, that's something you can build a mental check. Oh, 12 minutes, 14 minutes into a PBZ. This guy keeps remaxing. I feel like he has five bases saturated. What the hell? Oh, okay. You know what? I don't think he has spores. Let's just send a drone to like a DT to like three or four of his bases. That can be huge. But um, otherwise, like say, 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 um, I, mean, I guess we can go later in this map just to look at the creep and the map positioning a little bit we're gonna finish up in a sec um let's say we push down the right with our main army we'd absolutely just be warping in zealots there to attack around the left and we'd maybe split a few of those to actually go from there into that base as well because it's just about creating problems everywhere right with those zealots 
and then we might send a prism, our only prism or an extra prism up into the main. I'm a big fan of, I never really force the fight on the front. I just go forward and I'm like, hey, hello, I'm threatening, like I'm gonna push and I'll push in and out of a choke point, but I won't actually get myself surrounded ever with that army, right? I won't let them jump on me. I'm just trying to bait them into storms, force a lot of their attention, and then it's zealots hit every other base. And at the same time, I'm adding more bases, with cannons and batteries, and I'm building that big ass economy. And I'm a big fan of the double forge. So if you want to play that style, I think double forge is amazing um, because it allows your zealots. If you get like two, two zealots or three, two zealots and they're fighting, say just plus two zerglings, the zerglings get this shit kicked out of them. So one-sidedly, it is disgusting. Uh, even hydras, queens can't do damage to zealots when they get armor upgrades. Roaches don't do nearly as much. Um, yeah, it's it's something where you actually, if you play Ravager Bane against a Storm player and they just know how to attack, like queue up Zealots a lot, it is one of the most frustrating things in the world because if the Protoss sits his army in a blob, okay, I know how to fight that. But even then, once they get like six, seven Archons up with their Immortals and with a lot of Psy Storm, as a Ravager Bane player, you're like, fuck, I can't fight that until I get Broodlords, right? But at the same time, before that, you're trying to fight and then it's like Zealots are just constantly running in and attacking your bases. And if you've ever tried to deal with Zealot runbys with Roaches, it's so fucking bad. Like Roaches just don't kill them. So you can have like eight Roaches up here. Three Zealots can run in. They'll kill like five drones before the, the Roaches kill them, which is really annoying as the Zerg player because you've committed more than double their army supply and it doesn't even deal with it. You need to use Ling Bane to deal with the runbys. But as we know, Banelings aren't efficient against Zealots unless they're all clumped up, right? So yes, if you catch eight Zealots running in in a clump, you get your Banelings to blow up in the center, that's good. The thing is, if there's enough going on in a game, they're not going to do that. Most of those Banelings are going to blow up on one or two Zealots. It's very cost inefficient for the Zerg. And it's also you're trading your minerals as the Protoss player. What is the real power spike? More Archons, more Storm, more Immortals. It's all gas. If you All you need to do with your minerals is just say, all right, let's just slow him down, trade off. Even if you're just trading evenly or not even evenly, but you're buying yourself time to build that big main army, it makes a huge difference. And if you can just push in when you get a maxed out Archon Storm Immortal Army, as long as you're hitting pre-Broodlord, you're going to absolutely annihilate Ravager Bane. It's just about having enough Archons up front combined with Storm, combined with Immortal and doing a bit of a pre-spread on both your Archons and your Templar before the fight. Uh, the other thing is Lurker Hydra, sort of, well, Roach, Lurk, Roach Hydra into Lurker typically find that if they sort of build enough um, sort of early game defense, I kind of just, my push doesn't work, and then I end up in a game against Lurker Hydra, and I don't, Always yeah, it's, sort of it's the exact same really it's the exact do. same thing you just need to be more careful with the way you move your army around so basically you just want to keep your main army constantly moving to new angles to force them to siege and unsiege and if you do that combined with the zealot attacks and you're good the thing is if you have an oracle it helps a fuck ton okay so i really do think a stargate plus oracle for detection once you're on like four bases and you've got money to spare is amazing because then you can really see what's happening, right? With an observer, it's very difficult, isn't it? But other before that, you can still move an observer forward, especially using pervert mode and be like, oh yeah, he's not set up here. And it's the same thing if you can, um, or with a hallucination, see his whole army run one way and then your zealots get in a base, he's distracted, you run to another side. It's just about trying to like get in between his army and one of his bases and force, every time you force him to run up on you, kill a lurker or two, pull back, kill a lurker or two, pull back. And especially if you can force these fights before they have all the lurker upgrades, they're not as maneuverable and they have really shit range, only eight range compared to 10. So it's just once again about using movement and zealot run buys. Um, every time I look at someone play lurker Hydra, I'm like, they're, they're not covering everything. There's just no way. Unless they get a huge mineral bank to build an, a crazy amount of static, which takes a long time to build. Uh, if you're not going Blink Stalkers, you're in a very good position. If you play Blink Stalkers, you're kind of fucked because you just can never push in with Stalkers against Lurkers, right? But with Zealots and Archons and Immortals, anytime you're like, oh. And you could get get inspired watching a lot of the Zerg versus Terran right now. The Terran's like, oh, there's like six Lurkers on their own. Spreads the bio out and just jumps on it. Just bam, six Lurkers are done. Gets a base, gets 20 drones. Those You, you just need to build a uh, set of experience finding the right engagements against the Lurkers. So it's all about constant movement. It's incredibly stressful as a Lurker player trying to move the Lurkers around to defend. 
and most of them will either just spread the lurkers everywhere. So you're like, oh, there's only a few lurkers here, just kill them. Or they'll run them around in one big blob. In which case, like I said, you will catch them out of position eventually, shave off a bunch of lurkers, pull back, move in again. They have to run forward, burrow on you, shave off a bunch of lurkers, pull back. And you'll find that you can actually just toy with them. They do not have the ability to push you off the map. Even with a rather small army, you can actually often be just off the edge of Crete, threatening and going oogie boogie, while you know 30 zealots are actually running in on their fifth base and warped into their main at the same time because they just can't jump on you their army has doesn't have that that baneling ability to to initiate right whereas if you're sitting there with a shitty army hydra brain bane or ravager bane could always wrap around and jump on you lurker hydra doesn't have that ability so you can completely deny creep spread pick off any bases on the edges and just keep moving about so you want to take advantage of how immobile they are and how stressful it is trying to use siege units defensively it's very hard to have them set up everywhere great cool and one last thing before i go thanks chat for calling me uh Cyril. <laughs> <laughs> hells yeah yeah, I just saw that as well. I'm like, what the hell? Awesome. <laughs> yes, we're coaching Serral. Sounds exactly like Serral. Can you give us an it's nice, totally. please? It's nice. No, <laughs> A little bit too much feeling there, man. A little bit too much feeling, mate. Yeah. All right, man. Um, well, good stuff. And uh, yeah, uh, good luck in the uh, in the games, dude. Just looking for those power spikes Cheers. against the Terran 1 base and uh, all the rest. Awesome, mate. I'll catch you next time. Yep. Ladies, man.